Hey, what's up guys and welcome to part 30 of what if Tsunade was Naruto's mother. Remember to get this one to one punch like as usual, share this to all of your friends on your social media platform. And also go and check out on my second channel, I post a new episode of Naruto, the god of shinobi. And also I did a new episode of what if Naruto got a new bloodline. So switch across and enjoy those. And after this, I'm going to be posting what if Kurama gave Naruto a dojutsu and also what if Naruto was trained to be a mercenary. So stay in tune and enjoy all of the lovely what ifs coming your way. And if you're new and this is the first time you hear my voice, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and click that red subscribe button and join the anime making family and be a part of the channel. And thank you all for your support and help. And if you're new, comment down below and tell me. I'll be replying and talking back to all of you. And also check out my second channel, Anime King 2. And thank you for all of your support. So without further ado, let's get straight into this. So last time we left off, we had the whole ordeal with Naruto and the marriage. After that part was over, some other matches went on, as they were like same in the canon. But then, Karu faced off against Sakura. As Karu defeated Sakura in seconds, Ino then faced off against Samui. Samui defeating her in less just 3 seconds. As Naruto already predicted all of those match. The next match was Kiba vs Yujito. As Naruto know that Kiba won't win this. So yeah, that was basically the last part we left off. So let's get straight into this new episode. Kiba had thrown some smoke bomb on Yujito as he sent Akamar running in there because Akamar had her sent and he thought that Yujito couldn't see but Akamar was sent flying out of a smoke bomb as he was slammed into the wall Akamaru! Kiba cried out but he couldn't do anything as several kunais and shurikens fly out of the smoke as he quickly jumped to the side to avoid them but as soon as he did this Yujito appeared in front of him sending a knee to his gut. She then sent him flying backwards with a spinning kick towards the face. Tuh, that better not be to runt because I haven't even gotten warmed up yet, Yujito said angrily. Back with the cloud team. Damn it, Yujito is going to mess up that guy, muttered Amoy. Well, it is hardly a surprise, commented Samui, since you're aware. How Yujito reacted to comments and that boy just signed his own defeat by saying that comment. Huh, the bastard is getting what he deserved, said Karu as she had taken insult by Kiba comment earlier. Back with Yujito and Kiba, after struggling to get back to his feet, Kiba got back up as he was then joined by Akamaru who was limping after crashing into the wall. Seeing the state that they were in, Kiba knew that they had to go all out as he took out food pills as he gave Akamar one and took one for himself. When that happened, the both of them started to become feral as they started to turn into a more beast state. Akamar then turned red as he started to growl at Yujito, after which he then jumped on Kiba's back who was on all fours. As Kiba made a single hand sign, Man Beast clone, as Akumar then transformed into a perfect copy of Kiba. After Akumaru transformed, the two Kibas jumped forward and attacked Yujito, attempting to finish the fight quickly. Acting fast, she jumped back as she then threw several shurikens and kunais at them, forcing them to break apart. The two Kibas then charged forward, attempting to attack her from two different directions. Yujito quickly sidestepped the both of them as they were slashing at her with their claws. She then quickly jumped up into the air. Acting fast, the two Tibas turned to her as they then started to spin as they rushed at her with incredible speed. As Kiba cried out, Gyatsuga! As the both of them came down on her hard, but she moved out of the way, creating a huge explosion as there was smoke and debris everywhere but she didn't get hit as she was still inside of the smoke she then 
pulled out Ninja Wires as she started to farm late a plan. Both Kiba and Kiba's clone rush in there again. But this stands everyone in the spectators then heard Kiba hissing pain. As when the smoke and everything clear, Kiba was all wrapped up and Yujito had her sword at his neck pressing down a bit too hard causing it to bleed just a little. As she looked at him, the proctor realized that Kiba could no longer fight as Akumaru returned back to normal and fell down to the ground. As he then declared Yujito the winner of this match. As soon as Kiba was free, they returned back up to the stands where they got healed from Shizune. And the board started lit up again as the next match was Neji versus Hinata. When everyone saw this, a worried look came on Kurunai's face. Hinata, she thought. Damn it, of all people, it had to be him. Thought Kiba as he knew what this meant for his female teammate. This could be trouble. Thought Naruto as after meeting Guy and Lee, he had asked around for some things on their team, hearing that Neji was Hinata's cousin. That Hinata's father was Neji's father brother. But Naruto also heard about the rumors of the main house and the branch family, knowing that Neji hated Hinata because of the family that she was born in. And he also heard that Neji was a prodigy of the Hayuga clan. After seeing her name, Hinata walked down to the catwalk. As she was walking down, as she walked by Naruto, as he turned to her and said, it doesn't matter if you win or lose Hinata, just do your best. Alright Naruto, Hinata said, a bit nervous, as she moved to the arena. As Neji went down in the arena as well. And this battle is going to be the same as canon, since much hasn't changed between the two of them. When the match was going on, Naruto got pissed as he saw the way Neji was doing Hinata, making her drop to her knees cough up blood as Neji was doing her brutal as Naruto was about to jump down there but Yamato and Kushina held on to him telling him that he could not interfere if he did he will be removed from the exam but Naruto said that he couldn't stand by and let a friend get hurt at this Kushina responded and said that she wouldn't let him interfere as this was Hinata's battle and he had to let her fight by herself before Naruto could reply, he saw Hinata got back slowly to her feet as Neji got pissed as he then prepared himself to deliver the killing blow. As Neji rushed at Hinata, Naruto then jumped off the railing but he was stopped by Yamato who grabbed onto him. Just when Neji was a few feet away from Hinata to deliver the final blow, he was stopped by the proctor Kakashi. Guy, Kushina and Kurunai as Hinata then fell over but Kurunai caught her as she collapsed after all the pain dealt to her body. Neji stop this at once said Guy as he held Neji back from behind as his tone was different he was completely serious. You swore to me that you will not let your issues with the main family get to you said Guy. Why did you? and the other Jonins came out. Neji asked angrily, does the main family receive special treatment or something? After seeing Hinata collapse in pain, Naruto break free from Yamato's halt as he went down to the arena with his mother and Shizune right behind him as he saw the state that Hinata was in. When they got to Hinata, Shizune and Tsunade started to use their mystic palm technique. Naruto, did I get stronger? Hinata asked weakly as she saw Naruto right beside her. Yes Hinata you did. You did great, Naruto answered as he had a smile on his face as Hinata then fell unconscious. After losing consciousness, Naruto turned to his mother. Will she be alright? He asked. Her internal injuries are severe. But there is nothing we can't handle, 
she will be fine in a couple of days with some time for rest, said Tsunade as Naruto just nodded after hearing this. However, his mood quickly changed as he stood up and turned to Neji who had a cold, uncaring look on his face after he was let go by Guy and the other Jonins. You look like you have something to say, said Neji as he looked at Naruto who was glaring coldly at him. Why did you do this? Why did you go so far on Hinata? She's your cousin for God's sake. Does family really mean that little to you? Naruto asked angrily. She was weak and a dropout is a dropout. They can never change. Neji replied coldly. I don't even see why you care. She wasn't like you or I, Senju. She was born weak, a failure, and you shouldn't care about a failure. She may have been born of the main family, but fate decided a long time ago that she was weak and useless. And just like how fate decided that we will face one another in the exam, and I win. At hearing this, many of the other Jonins couldn't believe how Neji was acting towards Hinata. Shut up, yelled Naruto angrily as he felt his temper rise up. Me and you are nothing alike. I would never try and kill a member of my own family. I would rather rip off my own arm than to do something like that and fate had nothing to do with this match. You're just looking for an excuse to attack Hinata. Just because of some petty feud between your clan and if you know what's good for you, you better not insult her again. At this, Neji frowned slightly, but he quickly smirked at Naruto. She's worthless, he said. When Neji said this, Naruto lost it as he raised his fist and charged at Neji. As Neji then prepared himself to fight, but when Naruto was three feet away from Neji, his hand was grabbed by Jiraiya. Kid, settle down. Jiraiya, get out of my way, Naruto yelled, as it showed how angry Naruto was, as he really called Jiraiya by his real name. This bastard is going to pay for what he did to Hinata. Kid, I understand how you feel, but you can't just attack him. If you attack him now, you will get booted from the exam, said Jiraiya, as he tried to reason with his godson. I don't care, Naruto said, as he then struggled to free himself from Jiraiya's grip. As Naruto continued to struggle, Jiraiya could see the curse mark start to spread over Naruto's body. He's got to pay for what he did, Naruto yelled out in pure anger, and I'm not going to stop until he's a bloody smear at the end of my fist. Naturally, after hearing this, Many who know Naruto like Team 10, the Kiri team, the Kumo team and others Team 7 and Team 8 were surprised at the amount of anger that Naruto was showing Neji. It was like Naruto was ready to kill Neji. Not far from them and looking down at Naruto, a disguised Orochimaru couldn't help but be amused by the whole situation. As he was amused by Naruto's rage and saw how violent and angry he could be and this will be our opportunity to get Naruto to join him. Seeing how furious his godson was and that the curse mark was spreading, Jiraiya knew that he had to find a way to calm Naruto down before he went out of control. Naruto, I know you're angry, but he isn't worth getting booted out of the exam, said Jiraiya. Trust me when I say this, you will get a chance at him but there is a time and place for this sort of thing but not now so now just hold it for the finals where you can kick his ass in front of everyone if not for your own sake do it for the girl i am sure she wouldn't want you to get kicked out of the exam for what happened to her after hearing this naruto slowly started to calm down as he began to realize that jerry was right as he calmed down, the curse mark slowly started to retreat back. The mark then started to hurt him again, causing him to cover it and hiss slightly from the pain. 
Eventually the pain faded, where Naruto went back over to Hinata and the others, as Hinata was being carried away by a stretcher. Seeing this, Naruto then kneeled down as he dipped his hand in Hinata's blood. Seeing this, everyone wondered what he was doing. Naruto then stood back up as he stared at Neji, as he then stretched his arm out forward with his fist closed and blood dripping from it. I swear in Hinata's blood, I will make you pay for what you did to her. And I won't stop. I will defeat you and pound you into the ground and shatter that belief of yours, your fate and all that crap. Bold words, replied Neji calmly as he was unafraid of Naruto's words. But can you back them up, he asked. At this, Naruto narrowed his eyes and looked at Neji. You have no idea what I am capable of. At this, the both of them started to glare at each other until their respective senses came and placed a hand on their shoulders, bringing them back on the catwalk. After this was finished, the next battle was Gara versus one of Mai's teammates. As he took off his uniform, he was a standard looking guy. He had brown hair with a scar on his left cheek and he was carrying six folding up umbrellas on his back. The proctor then looked at them as he asked the both of them if they are ready. Gara said nothing but the other nodded as the proctor took Gara's silence as a yes as he told them to begin. The rain Jenin quickly threw the umbrellas up in the air as he twirled a single kunai on his hand. He then ran through hand sign with a kunai as he threw it up in the air. Kunai shower, he said. A hail of kunai fell from above as he used his chakra to control them. But Gara simply used his sand and knocked all of them away. Back in the stands, after seeing Gara use the sand, Naruto turned to his mother. Mom, I think that guy is like me, Yujito and Killer B. As Naruto read something about the tail beast, as he know that the one tail gives its user the ability to wield sand. As Saruto was also there, Naruto, are you sure of this? As Naruto nodded his head, positive. If this is true, then things have become more complicated, Saruto thought. Damn it, Jerry thought. What is the sand allowing a kid like him to enter this exam? As he had heard the stories about how the sand Jinjuliki went insane. Damn it, as if things weren't complicated enough with the cloud shinobi and Hanzo's daughter. Counting Naruto, there are now four shinobis here that possess bijus, thought Kushina with a frown. As she know, whenever more than one Jinjuliki appeared in the same place, disaster was never far behind. Could that boy be after Naruto? Tsunade wondered. Since like Kushina, she found it coincident that Gara, the one tier Shikaku, and the cloud shinobis to be in this exam with Naruto, something was up. Naruto, what do you mean by that? How is that guy like the Kumo shinobis? Ino asked as she was currently standing right beside Naruto. Sadly though, Ino never got an answer as Naruto was focused on Gara and just remained quiet. Back in the arena, impossible, cried the rain Jenin in shock as Gara blocked all of his attacks. How? How were you able to block them all? Gara didn't say a word as he unleashed a pool of sand on the rain Jenin. The rain Jenin quickly pulled out some kunai tags as he threw them at the sand, it exploded but the sand was too much as he just engulfed the explosion. It then wrapped around his legs, brought him up in the air. He then covered his entire body as he was in a sand cocoon. Gara then smiled evilly. Sand waterfall funeral, he said, as he squeezed his hands. And the thing exploded as a pool of blood just showered all over the area, killing the rain Jenin inside immediately. With the spectators, after seeing this, most of them were left in shock as they were frightened of the boy. Even the likes of Neji and Sasuke were stunned by the brutality of what Gara did. 
Those like Sakura and the others closed their eyes as Gara crushed the rain genin. As Ino buried her face into Naruto's chest, not wanting to see it. But Naruto didn't say anything, as, as like everyone, he was horrified as what he had seen. This guy is totally heartless and brutal, Naruto thought. Flawless victory as always, thought Baki as he looked at Gara. That idiot never stood a chance, thought a smirking Kankuro. Damn, that kid is brutal, said Zabuza. Such brutality, said Saratobi, as he knows that the one tier Shikaku is a mindless, emotionless killing machine. Just as I feared, this kid is a complete sociopath, thought Jiraiya as he looked at Gara. So he is the famous ultimate power of the sand, thought Kendachi, as one of his students just died, but he was unaffected. He is clearly not an ordinary genin, my thought with a frown, after seeing Gara's display of power. Even the likes of Danzo frown when he saw what Gara did, but for completely different reasons. Hmm, interesting. So that is a famous Sabuku no Gara, but why, as a san, send his Jinjuliki in this exam? Is it here because of Naruto, or for some other reason? This guy is a monster, thought Amoy in complete disbelief. Yujito did not take offense to Amoy's comment, even though that she possessed a tail beast also. But she agreed with him. What Gara did was completely brutal. She also had to acknowledge that the Nibi was right about the Jinjuriki of Shikaku. He was dangerous indeed. Soon after, the Proctor declared Gara the winner of the match. Gara started to walk back up the catwalk, but he then turned and looked at Naruto and Sasuke as he gave both of them a cold, piercing look. Seeing this, both Sasuke and Naruto stared right back at him, showing that they were not afraid. When Gara saw that they weren't afraid of him, he actually smiled, seeing that his prey wasn't afraid. The next match was Choji and Dosu and this went same like canon, where Choji lost. The other match was Amoy versus the other no-name Jenin of the rain. The match didn't last long, but Amoy was the winner. With Amoy, match now over and my last teammate being taken away to the infirmary, the screen began to lit up again and go through the remaining names. It then came to a stop at Kojuro and the last remaining member of the Taki team. Like many of the matches, the matches didn't last long as Kojuro came out as the winner. The scream then lit up again and went through the remaining three as the scream lit up with Sai versus Sato. After seeing the name, Naruto decided to pay close attention as he knew that neither Sai or Sato were weaklings and they were quite skilled. After seeing their names on the screen, both boys jumped down to the arena as the proctor asked them if they are ready, as the both of them nodded as he told them to begin. As soon as the match began, both of them draw out their swords and engage each other in combat. As the combat lasted for about few minutes, as both of them then jumped back. As they were going at each other hard with their slashes and blows, but each of them dodged each other attacks. For the first few minutes of the fight, both Sato and Sai proved evenly matched as neither of them were getting the upper hand. Sai then jumped back as he pulled out his sketch, as he then started to draw very fast as he sent ink clients towards Sato. Sato dropped his katana as he ran through hand signs, water style, gunshot as he shot two globs of water of the ink lion, as the ink lions reverted to puddle after they were hit. Seido then threw a couple of kunais and shurikens at Sai. Sai quickly jumped to the other side to avoid all of them. Sai then pulled out smoke bombs as he threw them all over the place, causing the entire place to be full of smoke bombs. Damn it, Seido thought angrily as he realized what Sai was doing. 
as he quickly picked up his katana and felt into a fighting stance. The attack soon came, where a flock of small ink birds rushed at Sato. Sato used his katana as he cut through all of them, as he reverted to ink. As Naruto was watching everything, but right now he couldn't really see anything because of all the smokes, as clash, sword clash could be heard inside of the smokes. As once all of the smoke and everything was gone, Sato looked over at Sai. You underestimate me. You should know that someone like me from the mist, fighting in smoke and not using our eyes is our specialty. As Sato rushed at Sai, he used the hilt of his sword to knock Sai in the head, knocking Sai down to the ground. As he stand over him, as he would then smile, thinking that this was too easy. But Sai then turned into ink, as he then felt something wrapped around his feet, realizing that all of this was just a distraction, as ink snakes wrapped around his entire body. After the proctor saw Sato was bound and unable to fight any longer, he decided to call the match, declaring Sai the winner. When Sai was walking back up the catwalk, he saw Danzo, as Danzo just gave him a nod. After Sai and Sato has returned, the scream then lit up again, as the first name stayed on Rock Lee, since he was the only one left and someone had to fight again. The names of everyone who are this fight started to spin, as everyone was wondering who was going to fight again. As most people didn't want to risk their place in the finals, as most of them already got through, as they were wondering who it was going to stop on. And as having the worst luck, it stopped on Naruto, as Naruto cursed in his mind, why? Why, Naruto said in his mind, why did it have to be me? As the names Rock Lee versus Senju Naruto was there, as Tsunade knew that some of her bad luck must have been passed down into Naruto. But Naruto was kind of feeling excited because he wanted to fight Lee. Someone he wanted to fight ever since his battle with Sasuke, as Naruto saw that Lee was a powerful taijutsu user. Yet, on the other hand, he wasn't at 100%. He couldn't use any of his chakra, and he was still a bit sore from his fight with Mai, but that technically put him and Lee on even footing. But he was certain that Lee had the advantage when it came to taijutsu. But he would just have to see. But there was one thing he wasn't going to lose because he will move on from this battle and make Neji pay in the finals. Yes, I am all fired up and now I can face a splendid ninja and prove that I have become a decent ninja myself, Lee said as he was all excited. Well spoken Lee, but let me give you some advice. Do not underestimate your opponent. Also, Senju Naruto is very skilled with the sword, said Guy. Yes, good advice, as Lee start to write it down. Don't write it down, you won't have time to read it when you're battling, said Guy. I see, more good advice, replied Lee, as he started to write it down again. Naturally, this caused everyone to have large sweat drops on the back of their head. Naruto then removed his katana from his back as he handed it over to Shizune. Naruto, why are you giving Shizune your katana? Since without his chakra he was vulnerable. But without the katana he was more vulnerable. Because I won't need it, not for this fight, stated Naruto. Do you believe that I am not a worthy opponent Naruto? Asked Lee who was slightly insulted by Naruto's comment. No, of course not Naruto said. As he stand up on the railing, the reason I am not going to use my katana because I want this to be a fair fight, your taijutsu against mine's. As he then flicked off. At hearing this, Guy started weeping anime tears. Such youth, Naruto, you are in the springtime of your youth, Guy cried out. Lee jumped off of the railing as well, as the both of them turned and faced each other in the arena. As the proctor looked at both of them, are you guys ready? He asked. As the both of them nodded with a smile. Alright, 
begin! But guys, gonna be in this episode right here. If you want to see the next part of this, you already know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification to stay posted. And remember to go ahead and check out my second channel. I posted two new What If episodes. And after this, I'm gonna be posting What If Kurama gave Naruto a dojutsu, and What If Naruto was trained to be a mercenary. So stay in tune and enjoy all the lovely What Ifs coming your way. But for now, I'm out. Peace.